with us. Like right now? Yeah, there's a chance. Um, You're out by yourself, it's okay, I'm not gonna judge you. No, I'm not! I f gotta go. <laughs> it just looks like you just kinda got out of bed. And no! You, you're just Steven Shapiro and Alex from Playing With Fire are both popular YouTubers who record themselves approaching women and trying to pick them up. And in this video, we're going to look at some of that footage and see who has better game. Because a lot of the people who do that are actually very cringy and have no skill with women, no social skills, no charisma whatsoever. Before we dive into the footage, I do want to let you know that you can get a copy of my online course, The Spark, which will teach you exactly how to approach and attract women. So make sure to click the link below to check that out. For the time being, temporarily, it is only $7 to get a copy. But with that said, let's look at the footage. Do you believe in love at first sight? No. Uh, Maybe? Yeah, sometimes. So you're saying there's a chance? Like... I like I do sometimes like it depends on like the vibe. You know? No, I'm saying like with us. Like right now? Yeah, there's a chance. Um Hi. Okay, so he's using a bit of a weird line. Do you believe in love at first sight? It's pretty over the top, it's kind of theatrical, it's not something you would normally say. But despite that, and he's doing that because it makes for a more entertaining video. So I can't really critique and say, oh, he's he's using like weird, creepy lines. He's doing it to get clicks and it's working. So, you know, I can't really I can't really say that means he has bad game. But what we can look at is how does he hold the frame? How reactive does he get when he puts himself out there in this kind of weird, very blunt, over the top way? Does he manage to keep calm and collected and to get the girl to start reacting to him, to start investing, to start being interested? And the answer is yes. I mean, he says his weird line in a very confident way. He's got a charismatic way of speaking and he's able to just let the girl start talking. He's able to hold a pause and let the tension build. And even though what he's saying is maybe not the best, the way he's saying it is very charismatic. No, I'm saying like with us. Like right now? Yeah, there's a chance. Um, Hi. Hi to meet you because you kind of look like trouble. Huh? You know, trouble? You, yeah. you kind of look like trouble. Why? I don't know. You, you're not. Alex is also using a bit of an unusual line because that's one of his Tinder openers, right? He says that on Tinder, and for this video, he's using his Tinder lines in real life. So he's also trying to pull something off that's a little bit unusual. It's not what he would normally say, but let's see what happens. I'm wearing Halloween costume, you know? Um, because yep. I didn't know I was going to do anything until like... Last minute, so I was like, oh, I might as well just throw on my leggings and like call it a day. Are you going as like a college girl? You're going as yeah, like a lazy like, college oh, girl? I'm like, I'm like the it girl right now, so you know. Damn, <laughs> kind of breaking the spirit. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, so there's something subtle that happened that a lot of people won't notice, but it actually is a big differentiator between like the so-called nice guys that girls don't find attractive and someone who's actually attractive to women. She said, yeah, I'm like the it girl. So he's basically teasing her for it's Halloween. He's teasing her for not being festive, for not looking, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, not having a Halloween costume really. And she's saying, yeah, you know, I'm the it girl. So she's basically turning that tease and reframing it as a compliment. But instead of falling into that, which is what a nice guy would do is, yeah, you must be the most popular girl in school or just agreeing. He's like, yeah, you're kind of you're kind of you're not fitting the vibe. Right. So he stays in his lane in the same thing he was saying before, which was teasing. He doesn't react to her attempt at reframing it and holds his own frame and frame is I, I think it's kind of a nerdy term to think about things in terms of frame and don't overly get paranoid like what is the frame here but it's always happening in any interaction there is a frame of the dynamic right it's either you're talking to someone who's above you you're talking to someone who you don't think you have a chance with it's like are you an employee talking to a manager or are you more like a manager talking to an employee? Are you assuming they find you attractive or are you assuming they're going to reject you? These are all things that come across in the frame. And the frame here is that he is not below her. He does not need to simp for her or try too hard or any of those kinds of things. He's assuming attraction and he's being unreactive, which is basically a high status frame to have.
I mean, yeah, I guess so. Oh. Like maybe get to know you or something. What's your name? Lexi. Lexi? Steven. Lexi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Is it cool if I grab your number? Sure. Hell yeah. I do want to warn you though. Mm -hmm. I have a Labrador. So I don't know what he's doing with his body language. It's, it's a little weird. He's like kind of leaning in and out in a bit of a strange way. Maybe this is just to make the video more engaging. I don't know, but he gets some negative points for that because it's a little, uh, comes across just a little reactive, right? Like a little bit like a nervous tick, for example. Uh, but other than that, his vocal tonality is really good. And his overall energy is friendly, but playful. And he's not coming across like a little bitch, right? He's not coming across like someone who's afraid to make his intentions clear. So what he's saying is a little odd, but overall, this is a very good approach. Um, a dog? Yeah. Yeah, I love dogs. But here's the problem. Okay. So when he was three years old, uh -huh. he, uh, he actually got into like, there's like this river next to where I live. Yeah. And it came out that it's like radioactive in there. And so he was eating it. Yeah. And so at night, kind of turns into a terror. Okay. But only on full moons. Okay. All right. Wait, I'll dude, do you know there's actually... So he's creating this whole role play that's kind of out there, right? He's saying that his dog is radioactive. And that might sound like a very bizarre and weird thing to say, but it does a few things. For one, it makes the interaction emotional as opposed to logical. They're not just exchanging facts. What's your major? Oh, do you come here often? All that kind of bullshit that guys get stuck in. It's a lot more intriguing and memorable for the girl than that. Because all the guys she meets and usually interacts with, it falls into a narrow range of conversation. And he's well outside of that range without being like, you know, creepy or weird in a bad way. So she's more likely to be like, that was an interesting conversation. Why did he say that? And it's also creating a narrative. It's creating a story that she can play along with, a role play that she can go along with that basically is this thing they have with each other. So I don't know if he came up with this in advance or if he just came up with it on the spot. It's not the best in terms of like a role play kind of thing to say. It's not the best I've ever heard, but it makes the interaction more intriguing, more memorable, and just not boring. Is an eclipse today? A red, no, I got to go. <laughs> okay, so she seemed down to meet up with him. The interaction was good. There seemed to be some level of attraction. That was a good first interaction. His opener was weird, but everything else was really solid. Everyone walks there. What are your uh, What are your plans for tonight? Um, I was just gonna go home, honestly. That's your, That's your plan for tonight? Just I mean, I've, I've been out. Like I've been out. Like I'm trying to go home right now. It doesn't now. look like it. It just looks like you just kind of got out of bed. Okay, so he's making the conversation a little bit more normal by saying, "What are your plans?" tonight, which is a getting to know you question. And it also basically finds out her situation. Is, is her boyfriend about to come over? Is she meeting her friends? Is she free to hang out and potentially, you know, split a bottle of wine on his romantic balcony with his dog? That's what he's able to find out by asking this. So it's really important to get it, get an idea of the situation by asking questions like this. So that's good. And he also ends up, let's uh, go back actually. Uh, I was just gonna go home, honestly. That's your, that's your plan for tonight. Just I mean, I've, I've been out, like I've been out. And he also kind of teases her. So that's your plan is uh, to do nothing. And the reason it works is because it's playful. He's not actually coming across like a red pill, men going their own way, kind of like, oh, so you're you're a loser, huh? Women. Are, he's not coming across bitter. He's coming across as playful. He's just having fun with her. He's not taking her too seriously. He's not taking himself too seriously. So that is good, right? Teasing makes it flirtatious. It's something a lot of guys, they just don't get. They don't understand. And that's why women see them as a friend because they just don't know how to flirt. So that's flirting 101. And you can tell she immediately shows signs of attraction and starts to get reactive. No, no. Listen to her tonality when he says that. Honestly, that's your, that's your plan for tonight. I mean, I've, I've been out, like I've been out, like I'm trying to go home right now. It doesn't now. look like it. It just looks like you just kind of got out of bed. And no. You're, you're just moping around the street. No. Very good sign. Treats. You'll see, it's like a bunch of palm trees and everyone walks there. I guess that makes sense. Wait, so you're saying there's a chance? What? Oh, I, I'm, I read this whole thing. I'm, I'm so sorry. I thought you were saying there's like a chance for, for us. That's... For what? Did I, I don't know, to fall in love and move to Mexico? I have no idea. Yes, sure, there's a chance. Fuck yeah. Okay, so the lines he said there were very weird, 
erratic all over the place. It didn't make sense, right? The girl's genuinely confused. And so in terms of verbal game, this is not good. Now, obviously he's making the video entertaining on purpose. So I can't say he couldn't do better. He probably could, but because that's what I have to see, uh, that's what I have to you know, give a review on. But the way he's carrying himself is very expressive. It's very grounded, very confident. And he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't come across like he cares if she rejects him. Like he'll be upset. Like he'll start stalking her and get needy. And that's how a lot of guys, that's what their vibe gives off is the impression that it's a big deal, that they really need something from her, that they really need something from her. And he does not have that energy. And that's partly why she's so receptive. Another thing he's doing well is just being fun and charismatic. Even though what he's saying is weird, He's very expressive. His voice has a lot of emotion, right? He doesn't sound like a robot. He doesn't sound monotone. He's having fun. And because he's having fun, she's like, well, he's kind of weird, but it's fun talking to this guy. So sure, why not give him my number? What's your name? Avery. Avery, I'm Steven. Okay, well, that's uh, that's, that's interesting. What are you doing other right, do you, than... Do you know where Palm Wall Yeah, is? no, I know exactly where it is. Mm. Yeah. All right, I, uh, I love you. Love you too. See ya. So that number has a very high chance of flaking because he didn't get to know her in any genuine way. And the whole interaction was kind of a joke, right? It was purely being weird and funny and it's entertaining. It's interesting to the girl and he has good energy, but it didn't seem like he genuinely wanted to get to know her or had any genuine interest in who she was. So the chance of that being a flake is much higher. Like just yeah, looking, just kind of looking like a no, little. Like I'm, a, like, I'm like, you're trying to figure out how the fuck to get an Uber to pick me up right now. Oh, uh, that's okay. I'm a police officer. I can uh, get. Oh my god, yeah. I, I'm, sure. I actually work for SWAT, yeah, so totally. I, I, we can take that car right there. Uh huh. I can, uh, you know, get you home safely. Right, I bet. But I'm also a corrupt police officer, so you're gonna have to give me a bribe of some kind. Oh my god. All right, so now he's basically sexualizing the conversation. He's been teasing her, and it's coming across as playful. So the dynamic is good overall, right? She seems very receptive, very flirtatious. And that's a good start, but now he's taking it to the next level and making sure that it's not just flirtatious, but that it's actually sexual. And so he's saying, I'm a corrupt cop. And look, he is kind of using the fact that it's Halloween to his advantage, which, you know, why wouldn't you? But now he can start talking about handcuffing her. There's a lot of directions he can go with this. And he's moving it in that direction. And one of the keys is that he's doing that one step at a time. He's not going straight into some sexual comment about her ass or some shit like that. He's moving slowly in that direction by bringing up the fact that he's a corrupt cop and then he can go to the next thing and then the next thing based on whether she's receptive or not. One of the things guys do wrong when they try to like, okay, I need to make it sexual. They just out of nowhere are like, damn, you're fucking sexy. I want to, it's weird, right? The girl's like, the girl, if she's just super attracted to you physically, it might work, but it's jarring and it's uncomfortable. And this is a much better way to do that. Like that's that's how I operate. And what have you been doing? You've just been like walking around trying to arrest people? Uh, yeah, basically. That's my night in a nutshell. No, we just got out here like 30 minutes ago. You guys just got here? Yeah. You don't know any good places to hide, do you? To hide? Yeah. Did you see that cop with the dog go by? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking for me. He's looking for you. Yeah. So, I've only been out of the country once, <laughs> but when I went... He's doing a great job at reeling her in with his storytelling. He's creating this interesting narrative about the cops being after him. We'll see where he goes with that. That might fall flat, but it's definitely intriguing. And the way he just smoothly got on his knee and like he, he's drawing her in and it's very intriguing, right? She's going to be fully paying attention to everything that he's about to say. I did something, but now that I'm back, <laughs> I'm trying to hide it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you've done something bad once or twice, right? Not like that, but sure. <laughs> so then, oh, so there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you can go. So he says his line for the video, which is, so there's a chance. And it's an awkward thing to say. It throws the girl off. But look at how he holds the silence. He's like, 
And he's just holding the silence and letting the tension build until she starts laughing. Right. He's not in a rush to like, oh, I know it's awkward. I have to. That's what a guy who sees himself as low status, who sees himself as unattractive to women will instinctually do. They can't hold the pause because they assume they're about to get rejected. They assume things are about to go badly and they're always on damage control. That's their mentality. Where someone who sees themselves as attractive to women, who sees themselves as high status, is going to do the opposite. They're going to assume the girl's going to come around. She's going to come to him. They leave emotional space for the girl to start to invest. Go to the secret garden thing. You know what that is? No. <laughs> But here, I'll get your number. She seems super into him. Like she's blushing. <laughs> like he really drew her in with that story, which is a weird but interesting story about how the cops are after him. It's intriguing. It's unusual. It's a role play. Again, like before, he's creating a role play. She's not sure how serious he is, if he's completely joking or just partially joking. And she's going along with it. And now she's fully following his lead. She's in a state of receptiveness to him, kind of like hypnosis, and she's all over him. This number, much more so than the previous one, would be very likely to lead to a date. We'll okay. fall madly in love. It'll be like Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, we'll yeah, start, for sure. We'll we start can, like, committing the crime. crime. And he just added another role play, which is great because it fit the conversation. If he just randomly said, we'll be Bonnie and Clyde, that could be a little bit cringy, a little bit forced. But they were already talking about how he's running from the cops. So it fits. And I'm guessing he just came up with that as a free association. Free association, if you don't know, is basically the ability to, whenever there's a conversation, the girl says something or you say something, you can build off of it with something creative, something random, something unique, and something funny. And that's basically what comedians do. It's what stand or it's what uh, talk show hosts do. It's a skill that you develop by approaching a lot of women because you have to start coming up with something interesting to say. And you can tell that he's very comfortable. He's very at ease and that he's approached a lot of women in the past, had a lot of success in the past because of how easily he's able to think of interesting things to say. Yeah, but don't say that too loudly because <laughs> I might be watching. What's yeah. your name? My name's Kaylee. Kaylee? All right, mm -hmm. I'm Steven, but we are now known as Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> there you go. All right, I love you. Bye. I love you too. Bye. This road up here.